together. And I thought I'd just show how to set it up easily, how it all goes together, and take you through step by step. So here we have the diesel tank. It can be a little bit fiddly fitting the actual nozzle where the fuel line connects to. So I'll take you through that. We have the base plate, the muffler and attach hoods. We have the manual. So just showing another view inside the box. Here we have the actual diesel heater itself. And all of the attachments in this box. solenoid fuel pump, the air vents, air ducting, we have a bag full of connectors, screws, cable ties, we have the exhaust pipe, the air inlet pipe, the air inlet filter, should go in there and cable tie that. The wiring harness and then the fuel line. And we have the actual diesel heater. Exhaust and then the fuel inlet. We also have the control panel and the remote control. So, all the tools that we need for this job. So, here in the corner of the summer house is where I'm going to fit the, the diesel heater. I've already pre cut two holes in the wall. One is for the exhaust and one is for the air intake. Traditionally, you would fit these diesel heaters on the floor, drilling holes in the floor and taking the exhaust and inlet through the floor. This rubber hose that's come with this kit, in my van when I installed the diesel heater, this, rose, this hose perished and was started dripping oil. You know, the diesel oil started dripping, seeping through the actual hose. So I'm not going to use that. You can get kits on eBay that come with a hard plastic type hose. So they come, this is, it's more like a, like a polythene rather than a rubber type material. And they come with these connecting bits of rubber. And this is much easier than trying to fit this hose over the various joints. It's very, it gets very slippy, especially once you've filled the system with diesel. So I'll turn the hose kit, um, and that's about that. Now I'll start assembling the heater on the bench, and then that way it's much easier to fit all the connectors together, and then I'll situate it in the corner of the sun house. So I've laid all of the parts out. We've got various Jubilee clips, they're for holding the exhaust and the air inlet onto the heater and also for holding the exhaust, that sort of the hot air that comes from the heater onto the heater unit and then the vent that goes in the end. We have a number of nuts that will hold the base plate onto the heater. We've got the exhaust pipe and we've got some clamps that allow you to attach that exhaust pipe to your van or to your shed. We've got the fuel pump, we actually have a, a rubber mounting that holds the fuel pump and that's to try and reduce the vibration. 
This is an electronic solenoid type pump, so the electromagnet switches on, pulls the, the, mag, the center to one side, which pumps a dose of fuel, and then the spring returns it, so it clunks quite a lot. You need to position this in a certain angle, and I'll verify that and show you that when I fit it. It doesn't go flat, it goes one end up, but I just need to make sure which end. If you're using the original, this rubber style hose, to connect the different joints, you take one of these little clamps and a pair of pliers and then you can expand it, put it over the hose and then, that, then you would slide the hose over the connector. And it is a bit tricky. And you might want to put a little bit of oil in between to make it slide but then the oil gets on your hands it makes it tricky that way once you push that up again you squeeze the connector pull it over and then clamp it but that should go further up but i'm not going to bother so we're not going to use any of these all right so simple things fit the air filter take one of the Jubilee clips. Now this time I will use one that comes with the kit. There's no, this doesn't need to be very secure to be honest. Just as long as it's not going to fall off. You can tighten it with a screwdriver. Or actually, I prefer to use the, the right one. Use a seven millimeter socket. And it's just easier. It doesn't slip off. Look at that, so it's hand tight. Oh, maybe a little bit too tight. So just don't over tighten that because it's plastic, it'll just crush it. So as long as it stays on. And do the same thing with the exhaust for the hot air. Slide the Jubilee clip over. And again, just tighten that up. Doesn't need to be too tight. Another Jubilee clip over there, ready to fix the heater. Okay. For the silencer, I'll fit that last because I need to put the exhaust through the shed wall, so I want to do that last. So I'm going to fit. I'm going to fit the base plate to the bottom, so I'm going to take the dust cap off the fuel tank. And I'm doing that better than me, so just line that up. Now the air inlet is the one nearest the fuel line. That's the air in, this is the exhaust. So this one will be hot. This one's cold. And then we just fit the four nuts. So I need a deeper nut driver. So again, I'm just going to tighten it up hand tight. You may want to tighten it a little bit more if it's going in a vehicle. Or you may even put nut lock on it. But this is just going to sit in the summer house. It's not going to move. Not going to be any vibration. Right. The next thing is to fit the exhaust in the air inlet and the fuel hoses. Very easy to do when it's on a bench like this, and it's part of why I'm um, installing it in this way in the summer house. Using this fuel kit system, you fit two of the Jubilee clips and then you slide it over and you can see how much easier that was to slide on than when I was trying to fit that rubber hose. The rubber hoses are, are quite difficult. 
This one, I'm just tightening up a little bit so it sits. I don't want to, I don't want to clamp the, the rubber. I just want it to sit there so it doesn't slide down. And then the other one, I want to tighten up. And again, this doesn't need to be very tight. It just needs to hang tight so it's not sliding around. Clamp onto the rubber and hold it onto that metal pipe. Once we've primed the system with diesel and we're running it, we'll just for the first sort of half an hour keep an eye on all of the joints and just see if there's any leaking. If you over tighten it, it will leak as well. You can see with this plastic hose, that will slide in there quite easily and then we'll tighten that up. For the air inlet hose, you need one of the Jubilee clips. Again, just use the one that came with the kit. This one doesn't need to be very tight. It doesn't need any gaskets in it either. And then I need to get my... exhaust gas. That's the one that you don't want any of the exhaust gas coming into the cabin. So you want to make sure that's sealed with some gasket paste, exhaust gasket paste, and that's when I'll use the good quality Jubilee clip on. So, need to apply wrap to keep it from drying out. And it doesn't need a lot of this. You just need to wrap it around, around this joint. You don't want to put it in the joint. You want to put it around all sides and that should be enough. And then seal that back up. Now we need to make sure we have a gasket on this, but we, sorry, a jubilee clip on this, but we can put that on after we've set it in place. You can see most of that is just going to come up at the bottom. So that I know how far into the, the hose it's gone, I'm just going to mark it up. That way I'm not trying to push it in forever. Right. So you see how easily that goes in. Trust me, it's a lot easier than the other stuff. So, 
because I'm not putting this directly into the floor, I'm going to make a little bracket that will hold it above the floor. And I'll come back as I've made that. So I've made a very simple bracket out of wood that the diesel heater is going to sit on and that will raise it off the ground. So it's upside down just now. So I'm going to put that on the floor then set the heater on top of it and then put the exhaust out through one wall, the air intake out through the other wall and then the next thing will be to connect up the fuel hose to the fuel pump and then the fuel tank. I also need to fit the exhaust for the heat and I need to put a sharp bend on that because it's so close to the corner but I can't put the heater too close to the wall otherwise you can't get the bend so I need to fit this first it just slides over Jubilee clip. Again, you don't want to over tighten it or it'll crack the cowling. secure the exhaust outside to make sure it doesn't touch the shed wall. So I've now fitted the exhaust on the outside and you can see there that it's going right through the middle of the hole and then I'll go to the outside and show it from that side. So this was a little bit trickier than I first hoped. There were no nuts and bolts in the kit to fit the bracket onto the silencer and I needed an extra bracket so that I could hold it away from the, the shed and make sure that the hose is coming, the exhaust pipe is coming straight through the middle of that hole. It's not touching any of the wood. One thing that's important is that with the silencer or the muffler, you need to fit it with that little, there's a little indent here, it's a drainage hole for any condensation. So you need to fit it this way up and with that hole to the bottom. And this is the air inlet on the side of the, the shed. And, uh, the exhaust is over in that corner. Next job is to fit the fuel line in the fuel tank. And I'm going to place the fuel tank next to the door and then run the line along and fit the fuel pump in between there and the heater. So here we have the fuel tank. Inside the fuel tank there's a little metal nozzle so we've got the fuel tank fitting kit and I say this is the most difficult part of fitting the diesel heater. We need to make a hole in the tank and we need to fit the outlet nozzle. So this nozzle, you see we've got a rubber washer that goes on the inside. Now we have to get this nozzle to come through a hole here. It's usually two of them, so you can pick which one, but it doesn't really matter. But we need to drill a hole the size of the thread in the side of this, and then we need to feed this from the inside, which sounds quite tricky. But you use a piece of string, and then that will allow us to pull it through. So I'll show that now. So we do need a drill for this part. I'm going to try, and I'm going to go to this out the way like that and to do that we use a piece of string 
repeat the string inside and back out, and then put the string through the nozzle. Strings in there coming out the bottom. You want to make sure, make sure you've got your rubber washer on there and make sure you put it the right way. Put it through the end. Now we need to tie something on the end of this. So I'm going to use a nut. It's behind it, so you can pull that nice and tight and pull it through the side of the can. And there you see it. It's going to get a little bit trickier, we've got to just get it. By twisting it, we should be able to screw it into place. that and screw it in place. I'll stick the rubber washer on and then we stick the nut on. Don't tighten too much. Obviously, it's like the sound of diesel pours out. Going back to my parts for the fuel line, I'm going to fit another one of these, these rubber hoses with the two Jubilee clips. And that just goes on there. The next thing to do is we connect the fuel filter to the fuel tank. And again, we need to cut a small section of the clear hose and then join that to the fuel filter. When you're fitting the fuel filter, this end goes towards the fuel tank, so the wee basket inside. Unfortunately, I don't actually have enough of these bits of rubber to join things up, so I'm going to leave the fuel filter out for now whilst I order more of these rubber bits. So I'm going to go straight from the fuel tank to the fuel pump and then into the diesel heater. I'm going to fit the fuel tank to the side of the shed in position where I will set it for filling it up, and then I'll fit the pump in between. But I'm going to fit the tank first of all. To fit the tank, you take one of these nuts, fit the big washer to it. You need to use the big washer, and it goes inside, punctures through there, and you screw that into your structure. There are a couple of things to note about the fuel pump. You'll notice on the fuel pump there is an arrow. This shows the direction. I don't know if we can get that. But it shows the direction of the fuel. So the fuel pumps towards the, the electrical connector. And when you fit the fuel pump, you need to fit it at a 15 degree upward angle. So between 15 and 35 degrees. It cannot be left level. It needs to be pointing up towards the outlet side. So I'm going to remove these dust caps. And then fit the two rubber hoses to either end. Ow. And then fit the Jubilee clips. This time make sure you're not blocking the connector with the Jubilee clip. Hand tight again, we're not trying to kill it. So before you hook up the actual fuel lines, you need to put this big rubber grommet on it to help dampen the vibration. And think about where you're going to screw this in. So if you're going to screw it in, 
have it at an angle, it's going to be something like that on the side of the wall. So there we have the fuel pump and the fuel line all fitted up to the fuel tank and to the diesel heater. The next job is to fit the electrical wiring system and the batteries that are going to run the system. So all of the connectors can only fit to one other place. So it's just a matter of connecting things up. The main connector goes onto the heater and we've got a line that runs to the fuel pump. So I'll connect that next. I'll need to tidy up all these cables afterwards. We've got the negative that goes to the battery. This is a 24 volt system. So I need a 24 volt supply. It's a rather short cable. I might need to extend it. We have the red positive that also goes to the 24 volt battery, which has an inline fuse. And then the last cable goes to the control unit. Triangle connector, can only go one way. Just click it in. And I'm going to look, the, the control panel has a, a mount that you can unclip, so you can screw that into the wall and position the controller. So for the power source, I'm using two of these rechargeable um, 7 amp hour 12 volt batteries in series to make a 24 volt battery. So I'm going to need to terminate some crimps onto the end of these cables. I'm using this IKEA table just to protect the heater so that nothing will bash into it and also to set the, the batteries on top of. already made up a cable to join the positive and negatives of the batteries together. It's not really the right colour. And then we connect the positive to the positive. And finally the negative to the negative. And now we can see we've got power on the system. The next step is to fill the fuel tank, then prime the system which feeds the fuel into the diesel heater and then after that we can start it up. So I'm just going to put some fuel into the tank. Hopefully this doesn't make a mess. Yeah, I'm not going to fill the tank. Put a couple of inches in the bottom. We can test the system, make sure we've got no leaks. So, after a couple of failed attempts at priming the diesel heater, following the manual that came with the diesel heater, but it was incorrect. So, for this, it's a newer style of heater and it's, you have to press both the up and down arrows at the same time and then, you'll, and then you can hear the heater is now pumping well the fuel pump so we have to keep that held down until we see the fuel come all the way through and reach the actual heater it's the next day light was fading there's still not much light, it's early. Had a slight leak with the diesel coming out the bottom of the fuel tank. So I've just tightened up the Jubilee clips and also the thread that goes into the fuel tank. And I'm just checking on that. Looking around that. The fuel has been primed. So it was clicking away. The fuel has come through. I've got some more tissue paper under here to check if it's leaking but there's no leaks around the fuel pump so we're ready to fire it up now we're going to switch it on so 
So it's going to start by warming up the glow plug. Once the glow plug's up to temperature, you'll hear the fuel pump kick in and then it should ignite. We'll probably get some smoking off the exhaust as the exhaust paste as that cures. So I'm going to leave that to run for a good 10-15 minutes that will cure all of the exhaust paste. Obviously don't want to touch the exhaust pipe, that pipe gets very hot. And we're going to have a look outside. So here we have the exhaust. Good heat coming out now. Here we can see I've got it set to the maximum, actually, yeah, maximum temperature of 40 degrees. The room temperature at this thermostat is 15 degrees. And if I drop it down. You can probably hear in the background that the fuel pump is slowed down. So adjusting the temperature up and down increases the speed or, the, or decreases the speed of the fuel pump. So I'm just going to switch it off. And then you can hear the fuel pump is switched off and now it goes through its cool down sequence. It'll take about a minute. Okay, thank you for watching.